of section 2.5 we're solving inequalities and in part one we'll be solving only linear that is there will be no x squared terms in these in part two we will look at quadratics inequalities are statements that have one of these symbols that you've been introduced to many times in your math life since you were very young but only periodically we have a less than less than equal to greater than greater than or equal to all right the addition property the addition property for solving inequalities is virtually identical to solving equalities that is our inequality will be preserved if we add some constant to the left and right if you have an inequality a being less than b and this less than can be any of these if you have this statement then it is preserved if we add some constant c to both the left and the right we read this thing as implies or if then if this then this you'll notice that's exactly like what we said with with an equation if we add some, thing, some value C to both sides, it doesn't disturb it. Over here, I'm just, you're not copying this, you're just thinking about it. Um, is 4 less than 5? Sure it is. Now let me add 2 to both sides, adding that same value to 4 plus 2, that's 6. It is still less than 5 plus 2, 7. This is a true statement. This one down here is true. All right we can add the same thing to both sides that's what it's getting at alright now the multiplication property well the addition property had a near perfect analog multiplication the multiplication property is slightly more complicated the multiplication property says yeah if you have a is less than b okay it is perfectly okay to multiply some value c to the right and left and that will hold your your inequality if c is positive if you are multiplying or dividing by a positive number life is good okay but if that value C is negative that you multiply or divide by, you are going to have to change the direction of the inequality. I mean to have this one be changed. So it went from um, A being less than B to A C is greater than B C. We switched the direction of this inequality. It went from a less than to a greater than. If this value that we multiplied or divide, divided by is negative, C is negative. All right, let us look at a couple of examples. Let's look at a, a regular example where um, C is C is positive. All right, so we have um, let's say three x, and in the C that I'm speaking of here is my my multiplicative C. Let's say we have 3x plus 4 is less than 
25. All right, we want to solve for this variable x. Just like with our inequalities, we have an add 4, so we will subtract 4 on both sides. When I subtract that 4, the 4 subtracts from 4, leaving 3x on the left. 25 minus 4 is 21 on the right. What do I do with this inequality? I preserve it. Just leave it just like it is. No problems. Okay. So whether we add or subtract some constant, we're going to keep that inequality moving the same direction. Next, we divide by 3. Well, if we're dividing by some positive value of c, when c is positive, then we are going to again preserve this inequality. So 3 divides 3 to leave x on the left. I will leave my inequality exactly like it is. 21 divided 3 is 7 on the right. Our statement is x is less than 7. This is a perfectly okay to write this. Now, um, one thing with inequalities is we'll have multiple ways that we can write it. I can say that x is less than 7 in this fashion, or I can um, self a number line. I'm generally going to put 0 somewhere in there. I'm going to show my value the, of interest, 7. And now I want to shade values that x less than 7. That are values to the left. It, if my variable is on the left-hand side, the inequality will point in the direction of shading. So I'm going to draw an empty circle on 7. Empty because I'm not equal to 7. There's no equal to part. And I'm going to shade values to the left. Employ a highlighter here. I'm shading values to the left. My all values in this shaded region satisfy my inequality, like 0. If I substitute it in 0, 3 times 0 is 0, plus 4 is 4. Is 4 less than 25? Yes, 0 works. If I picked values over here on the right, it wouldn't work, like 10. 3 times 10 is 30, plus 4 is 34. Is 34 less than 25? No, it's not. 10 is no good. It's not shaded. Okay. So we can write it using this sort of notation, we can write it using a number line, or we can also use what's called interval notation. With interval notation, I'm going to use either some um, parentheses or some brackets. When we don't have an equal to sign, we will use open parentheses. Now I can go all the way to negative infinity. The way that I note that is negative and this little sideways looking 8 character that you have probably seen at some point in your life. It's not the best infinity symbol I've ever drawn. That one's a little bit better. It should be closed there. Alright. From negative infinity to positive 7. That's how we read this. This reads from negative infinity to positive 7. Stated another way, it's all values less than 7. So these are three alternate ways to write the answer. You will typically choose one. Okay. Let's look at another example where C is negative. Example number 2. C, the multiplicative C again, is negative. Okay, let's say I have a um, negative 4m minus 2 is less than or equal to this time. And the equal to is only going to change the end about the coloring of the of the of the dot here or what symbol we're dealing with here or how the inequality is going to be expressed. The operation part it won't won't affect it. Is less than or equal to forty six. All right. I will first, um, solving for m, I will add 2 to both sides. Add 2 to the left and add 2 to the right. This cancels, leaving negative 4m. I should say adds to 0. 46 and 2 is 48. Alright, exactly the same. I didn't change the direction of my inequality. Now here comes the different part. In this case, I am dividing by a negative, dividing by negative 4. 
When I divide by that negative 4, the negative 4 cancels with the negative 4 to leave m. And here comes the different part. Here it's less than or equal to. This becomes greater than or equal to. When we divide by a negative, divide or multiply by a negative number, we will change the direction of the inequality. 48 divided negative 4 is a negative 12. Now let's express our answer similar to how we looked at, um, at this one. I want, this is one way to write it, m greater than equal to negative 12. Another way to write it using the number line, here's my number line, here's 0, here's negative 12 over here. I want values greater than negative 12. Well this time, instead of an empty circle, I'm going to color that in. I'm going to color in my point this time because I can be negative 12. I want values greater than, I'm going to shade to the right. In this first example, I did not color in 7 because I was not possibly equal to 7. In this case, I am possibly equal to negative 12, so I colored in that point and I shaded all values to the right. Again, you notice my inequality, if my variable is on the left, it's, you can think of it as pointing in that direction. I want values of m greater than or equal to negative 12. That's what I've shaded. Lastly, we will show our interval notation. This time I want to start with negative 12, but I can be negative 12. If you can be that, then we use a bracket, comma, and positive infinity. We're going all the way to positive infinity, and infinity always gets a um, open parentheses because if you think about it, we're never going to get to infinity. We just keep advancing, okay? All right, so these are three different ways to express that inequality. I want to look, um, that pretty much concludes your notes. I want to look at one more um, graphic from the, the book. All right, this shows different ways that we can express these inequalities. Should you copy this down, you should understand it. Perhaps you want to want to copy it down. These are some compound inequalities. This first one shows that um, negative 3 is less than x is less than 2. The way to write that with, with interval notation is open parentheses negative 3 to 2. And over here it shows uh, the graphing with the open circles. The open circles because we didn't have the equal to part. You can also use um, the parentheses on the number line. All right. Here's the same statement, but this time we had the equal to. Thus we had the bracket, the brackets on the number line, or the, co or the what we call closed circles, colored in circles. Here is one side equal to and the other side not having the equal to. So you see the bracket and the open parenthesis. Here's bracket in the parenthesis. Here is a closed colored in point and an open point. So the, those are um, different ways that we can write those. All right, now I'm going to go to XYZ and do just one or two problems to show how you will um, express these using the software. All right. Now on XYZ, I'm looking at problem number two. Let's try problem number three. Okay. So we have 10Y plus 6400. All right. Ten Y plus sixty four hundred is greater than or equal to sixteen thousand, I should have said. But we begin by subtracting the sixty four hundred on both sides. When we do that subtraction, we have 10y. We preserve this inequality greater than or equal to. Doing this subtraction leaves us 9,600. Dividing both sides by 10. Did we divide by positive or negative? We divided by a positive. Thus, there is no change in this inequality. We have y is greater than or equal to 
9600 divided by 10 is 960. All right, so we want to express this answer. How will we do it? Back to our XYZ. I want a graph greater than or equal to 960. Click here. I can then come to the, the yellow symbol that has us doing the the um, math quill. Click on intervals. All right, and now you see the various kinds. I want greater than 960, so I can click on on um, this interval here. All right, I want to go from um, 960. Actually, I want. Pardon me. I want to pick this one because I can be equal to 960. I'm going from 960, that's the equal to portion, then get on the other side of the comma, to positive infinity. And that's my interval. I can be 960 and I'm advancing to positive infinity. I go save. And then I'm ready to hit submit. And we see we got that one correct. I'm going to show one more problem. This one, I'm looking at question four. Reattempt this question. Let's try. I'm going to go similar. Lastly, we'll look at this compound inequality. A compound inequality is an inequality that you see has two. It's, an, it's a statement that has two inequalities in it. This will be easy to deal with. We're simply going to treat it as two separate inequalities. The first one will be this first portion. 1 is less than or equal to 1 half t minus 2. 1 less than or equal to 1 half t minus 2. And then separately, we will look at the second portion. 1 half t minus 2 is less than or equal to 8. 1 half t minus 2 is less than or equal to 8. These are two separate problems. I'm just going to give myself a little separator line here. Alright, so looking at this first portion. Solving for t, I will first deal with this subtract 2 by adding 2 to both sides of my inequality. Since I've added the constant, I can um, I now have 1 half t on my right hand side. Preserve the inequality. Keep that the same. 1 plus 2 is 3 on the left. Now solving for t, I have 1 half t here. I can simply divide by this coefficient of 1 half. Dividing by 1 half on the left and the right. And when you divide by a fraction, when you use your calculator, you just make sure you put this in a, in a parentheses. 1 half divides 1 half to leave t. Preserve this inequality. 3 divided by 1 half is 6. We have 6 is less than or equal to t. An equivalent statement is t is greater than or equal to 6. Notice the big mouth facing the t, the big mouth facing the t. All right. Now let's look at this inequality. Solving for t, we'll begin by adding 2 to both sides. The 2's add to 0, leaving 1 half t. Preserving my inequality, 8 plus 2 is 10. Now, solving for t, instead of showing dividing by 1 half, I'm, I'm going to show what's probably a little easier to think about in this case. I'm going to multiply by 2 because 2 is the reciprocal of 1 half. 2 times 1 half, well, that cancels, multiplies to leave 1, leaving t. Whatever I do to the left side, I must do to the right side, multiplying by 2. Preserve the inequality because I multiplied by a positive. I don't want to change the direction of that. 10 times 2 is 20. All right. So I have the statement t is less than or equal to 20, or and I should say t greater than or equal to 6. Two ways we can express this. One is with 
our inequality notation. That is, I'm just going to place t in the center, all right? On one side, I have this statement. Here you see it's exactly like it is there, 6 less than or equal to t. On the other side, I have this statement, t less than or equal to 20. And to me, this, this always made sense to me. Do you see t is between 6 and 20? And that's what this is stating. Here, t is bigger than 6. Yep, t is bigger than 6. But also, and t is less than 20. So t can be all values between 6 and 20, including those endpoints. We have those equal signs. Alternately, another way we could do this is with our number line. Um, I want my values of interest. Here's 0 over here. Here's 6. Here's 20. Since we're dealing with an equal to, we need a colored in closed point on 6 and 20. And then we shade all the values in between. Okay. T can be 6, T can be 20, T can be all values in between. Now our set, um, our interval notation, we would use closed brackets because it can be 6 to 20. These are um, three alternate ways to write this, um, express this same answer. All right. Now going to our X, Y, Z, let's see if we can enter in this answer. Okay. Let's go clear all here, clear all. All right. I want to enter, I want to draw my line segment. I go dot, not open dot, just dot here. I don't know why they didn't choose to use the words close point, open point. Um, there's six, there's 20, almost 20. Dot. 6, 20, and then go line segment and then drag from there to there. So you can see we have shaded all values from 6 to 20, including those endpoints. Now I want to enter in my, go to yellow to get the math quill, go to inequalities, and I can go from 6, um, I want that symbol, T, again less than or equal to 20. You can see t is between 6 and 20, including those endpoints. All right. We will submit. And we got all, all those right. Okay, hopefully with this you can conclude that assignment.